thank you, Jesus. Pour the Holy Ghost out on us on tonight. Pour your spirit out, Jesus. Glory to God. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Have your way on tonight. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. We serve a mighty God on tonight. We serve a mighty God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God bless all of you. We'd like to welcome all of you tonight to this live broadcast where Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Come on, let's put our hands together and give our God praise. Come on, somebody. I know you came expecting on tonight. I know you came with your faith high tonight. We serve a good God. He loves you and he cares about you tonight. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, anoint the hearts and the minds of your people to be receptive on tonight. God, we pray for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost and fire on tonight. It's not by power, it's not by might, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. Dear God, have your way tonight. Anoint the worship. Anoint the preaching and the teaching of the Word of God. As Minister Jeff pours out what you gave him for all of us here on tonight. Move by your power and by your spirit on tonight, God. We love you with everything in us. Dear God, we bind the devil in advance. We bind every foul and unclean spirit on tonight. Satan, you lost. Can someone open your mouth and declare it? Open your mouth and say, devil, you lost. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on. Open your mouth and make a bold declaration and say, devil, you lost. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, type it in the live chat. Type in the live chat, devil, you lost. Glory to God. Come on, somebody, put your hands together and help us. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. The humble, the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify. Glory to God. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us, let us exalt his name together. David said, from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the name of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Come on, put your heads together and give him praise. The name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Even when I don't feel like it, I'm going to praise him. Come on, somebody. Because he is worthy. He is faithful and true on tonight. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Ghost. We thank you. Give me a moment. I believe I want to just sing this old song, and I'm going to turn it over to Hannah. Ready, Kelts? Let's go for it. Well, welcome into this place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, sing it. We put the words up there, Josh. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. Come on. So we lift our hands and we lift our hearts. As we offer up this praise unto your name. Come on and sing it with me. Welcome, sing it to him. Welcome into this place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Sing it to the king tonight. Welcome into this broken vessel. 
that you desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands and we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name. Come on and sing it with me. Tell him welcome. Welcome into this place. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Sing it to him. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. Come on. So we lift our hands. And we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name. Come on and sing it with me. Sing it to the King. Welcome. Welcome into this place. Thank you, Lord Jesus, on tonight. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands as we lift our hearts. As we offer up this praise unto your name. Come on and sing it to Jesus on tonight. Tell him welcome. Welcome into this place. Come on and sing it to him on tonight. Tell him welcome. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift, so we lift our hands as we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto you. Now listen, I'm, I'm here worshiping the Lord, but about a few minutes ago, I'd just like to wait on that confirmation. Somebody on the right side of the chest is having severe pain, and the Holy Ghost is healing you right now. Just put your hands right there. I rebuke that severe pain, the right side of the chest. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I curse the spirit of infirmity. I command you to loose them and let them go in the name of Jesus. I command you to loose them. I feel that thing subsiding. I feel it leaving, Jeff. I feel it leaving. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's almost completely gone. It's almost completely gone. It's almost, uh, there it is. It's gone. Somebody put your hands together and help me give him praise. Somebody help me give him praise. Someone just been healed. Somebody have just been healed. You came on this broadcast and you had severe pain on the right side of the chest, almost in the center, but to the right of the center, right to the right of the center, and the Holy Ghost have just healed you. The Holy Ghost have just healed you. I said the Holy Ghost have just healed you. Oh, he's a miracle worker. Come on, somebody. Put your hands together and help me give him praise. Help me give the king praise on tonight. Come on and sing it with me. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on into this place. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands and we lift our hearts. As we offer up this praise unto your name. Come on and sing it to him. Sing welcome. Welcome. You got it, Hannah? Into this place. Come on, help me sing it tonight. Tell him welcome. Welcome. Into this broken vessel. Into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praise. Of your people, so we lift our hands as we lift our hearts. As we 
offer as we offer up his praise unto you. Come on and sing it to him. Tell him welcome tonight. Welcome into this place. Sing it, Hannah. Tell him, welcome into this place. Welcome Come on. Into this place. Tell him, welcome into this broken vessel. Welcome into this place. Welcome into this place. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we So we lift our hands. Come on. So we lift our hands and we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto you. So we lift our hands. Tell him, welcome into this place. Sing it to him. Welcome into this place. Thank you, Jesus. Tell him welcome into this place. Tell him, welcome into this place. Welcome into this place. Thank you, Jesus. Praise unto your name. 
Oh, come on, somebody. Put your hands together and help us give him praise. Come on, somebody. Help us give him praise on tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God.
Break every chain, break every chain. Yeah. 
every chain, break every Surprise!
to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Jesus, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Oh, Jesus, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. And she's the same, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, Jesus, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. And I want you to do that song for me exceedingly abundantly. He's able. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Come on. Glory to God. To me abundantly above all. All you could ask or think according to the Somebody worship him on tonight. 
Don't give up on God, cause He won't give up on you. He's able. Oh, 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 oh. He's able. Oh, 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 He's able. God is able to do just what He said. somebody put your hands together come on come on glory be to God come on somebody help us give him praise can someone open your mouth and say he is able he is able glory to God Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 said he is able to do exceeding abundantly glory to God above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us what a mighty God we serve. Isn't our God absolutely awesome tonight? Come on, put your hands together and just give him another praise. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. I want to read a scripture here before I receive, before I go into the receiving this evening's offering for the preaching of the gospel. It's an honor and a privilege to have so many wonderful people of God that he is calling alongside us to work with us in the ministry and to help us carry the weight of the ministry. Josh, I want you to bring Acts chapter 15, verse 35 up there for me, please. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Go with the word there says, Paul also and Barnabas continued teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. Paul didn't do it by himself. He couldn't. He couldn't do it by himself because he would have died before his time. Now think about this. This is the great apostle Paul. He is the Moses of the New Testament. Paul wrote more than half of the New Testament and Paul was not a one-man show. The Bible says, Paul and Barnabas continued in Antioch teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. You can't do this by yourself. Moses was about to burn himself out doing just way too much. And his father-in-law sat down to meet with him. Moses' father-in-law said, Mo, you're taking on too much. You can't do this by yourself, Moses, or else you're going to burn yourself out. You'll, you'll, you'll experience, you'll go to the grave before your time. And Moses' father-in-law advised him, 
You need to get 70 elders, sonny boy. You can't do this by yourself. Jesus, who was God in the flesh, chose him 12 men. And that wasn't enough. <laughs> Glory to God. I said that wasn't enough. And then he, the Bible says in Matthew 10 or Luke 10, he appointed 70 others because he needed help. He couldn't do it by himself. And then the sons of thunder got upset because I believe it's in Mark, in the book of Mark, where they came to Jesus and they said, we saw one of them other ones casting out devils. Should we forbid him? Jesus is thinking, you tripping. We need all the help we can get. Are you out of your, are you, did you lose your marbles? <laughs> Jesus say, forbid him not, for there's not a man who can work a miracle in my name who will speak lightly of me. Come on, somebody. Jesus said, he that is not against us is for us. Leave him alone. <laughs> ah, glory to God. Me and Jeff wasn't among the 12, and we wasn't among the 70. We weren't even among the 120, nor the 500. He appeared to we just one of them other ones. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Put your hands together and give him praise. Can someone lift your hands to heaven and say, I'm one of them other ones? I'm one of them other ones. <laughs> glory to God. Come on, somebody. Lift your hands to heaven and declare it. I'm one of them other ones. I'm just... I'm just glad to be in that number, one of the other ones. Glory be to God. So once we receive this evening offering, Jeff, Jeff is going to come and preach the gospel for us tonight. I've known Jeffrey 10,000 fried chickens before this. <laughs> yeah, I had hair then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of you laughing, but you 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 you'll feel it here in a minute. Glory to God. Jeffrey has been he's proven himself. I'm not impressed I'm not impressed with gifts and callings. I'm not even impressed with an, I'm not even so much impressed with anointings as I am loyalty. Loyalty trumps the gifts of the spirit and anointings any day. Judas was anointed too. So was King Saul. They were gr even the devil was anointed. But he wasn't faithful. He was not faithful. He did not know how to humble himself and be a team player. He wanted to be the man. And the Holy God said, I, uh, God said, you need to go find your own place. <laughs> This is teamwork, saints. You can't do this by yourself. God always puts someone in the front to lead. Are you listening to me? But even though God may call you to lead, you can't do this by yourself. This is just too much for one person. Amen? And that's why, you know, we, are, we, ha we had uh, four ladies who worked with us in the ministry. They were on, and you'll, you, we'll have them on again. Amen? We'll start probably bringing them on once a month or once every other month. You'll hear them. And we are having our kids. We are training other people. Amen? That's the call of God on me and Pastor Amy's life is to train and equip other people to teach and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can't do this by yourself. You are deceiving yourself if you think you can do this by yourself. You can't do it by yourself. Amen? Thanks, Kales. I want to read something to you from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 17, verse 11. This is the widow, as we're about to receive our offering for the preaching of the gospel. Elijah, at the end of verse 10, actually, right at the end of, you don't have to go there, Josh. At the end of verse 10, Elijah said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, she's walking in obedience. He called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in your hand. He didn't ask for a whole lot. He just asked. He, this woman, her back was already against the wall. This was a stretch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Men of God will stretch you, right? But, but it's, not, it's, not, it's not, they're not just stretching you for stretching sake. They're stretching you because God's about to give you a miracle. Yeah. Come on, somebody. I said, God is about to give you a miracle. 
Someone is saying uh, the volume is low. It sounds f- no, no. My, my, the volume is great. That that's that's your that's your device. Whoever that is said the volume is low. No one is saying low. I promise you. <laughs> we can. Uh, if I turn this up, I'll I'll have to be praying for the deaf here in a minute. <laughs> but but I want you to see this. So Elijah, by the Spirit of God, is challenging this woman when she is already in a tight place. She was already in a tight place, but God was not asking her for, for, for something that she couldn't give. He said, give me a morsel. God, there was, there was a harvest behind her morsel, and this is where faith come in. Come on, someone lift your heads to heaven. I feel the Holy Ghost talking to us. You may as well bring me in the flow. I had the Holy Ghost talking to somebody right here. This is where faith comes in. Now, I got news for those folk who say, well, God, th- this, is, this, is where, this is why so many people in the body of Christ are robbed. You know how many people, people watch this broadcast by the millions, right? And you know how many people say, well, Pastor Sean, as soon as God give me a breakthrough, I'll give. It, no, 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 no. That ain't no, sir. I'm going to bring, I'm going to drag you right back in the Bible. I'm going to drag you in the Bible kicking and screaming. God, you give, no, 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 you can't tell God how to do this. That's, that's where you're missing it. You said, give me a breakthrough and then, no, no, no. If God can't trust you to give him a morsel, he's sure not going to give you no whole loaf. Because you got to be faithful. Right, Jeanette? Right, Jeanette? You got to be faithful and that which is least first. Then he will trust you with a harvest. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. His righteousness means his way of doing things. So Elijah said, then the Holy Ghost is talking to someone here, Jeff. Elijah said, Shh, bring the music down just a bit for me. Elijah said, Fetch, he, he said, he said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in your hand. I know things are tight, but this is all God wants is just a little tiny bit. No gift is too big or too small. The widow, the widow only had a mind, and thank God, me and Pastor Amy and our kids were at, we, vis- we visited the Nazarene, and we saw a widow, we saw a might from out of the time that that Jesus was walking the earth, blew our minds to look at a real might. We even saw one of Pontius Pilate's coin, it blew our minds. Don't tell me this Bible ain't real. Anyway, let's get back to the might. <laughs> Verse 12, and she said, put that scripture up, and she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a ha- Elijah, are you tripping man of God? You ate too much pizza. I mean, (laughs) did the ravens do something to your food? I have known a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. I ain't got much. That's what a whole lot of people on here are saying. That's why I know I'm talking to the right crowd. Because God, God have a miracle on the other side of, I feel the Holy Ghost here. I say God's got a miracle on the other side of your obedience. That's what faith is. The substance of things hoped for. Glory to God. And the evidence, this is the evidence of things not seen. What you don't see is you don't see your way out. You don't know how it's going to work out for you. But I got good news for you. The Holy Ghost is challenging you to obey. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Elijah said, I just want a morsel. Go back to verse 12. She said, I only got a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Listen here, you're right, you're going to die if you eat your seed. You will die if you don't obey. That will be your last meal if you allow the spirit of stinginess and doubt and unbelief to get a hold of you and say, oh, they just after your money. No, God ain't just after your money. God's after blessing your socks off. 
He is after opening the windows of heaven and pouring you out a blessing and, and giving, you, giving you something that you don't have room enough to receive. But he's asking you to obey him with the little bit that you have. <laughs> don't be like the lady who said, pray for me, Pastor Sean, that God give me $50 million and I promise I'll send $50 to the ministry. You'll be waiting a long time if you think I'm going to pray that kind of demonic, satanic, ungrateful, uh, disrespectful thing in the eyes and ears of God. You'll be waiting a long time. Eternity will come two or three times, and I still ain't going to pray that prayer because that's unbelief. That's someone who don't trust God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, not some all, 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 all. Lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he promised he'll direct your steps. Let's go to the next, watch this. And Elijah said unto her, verse 13, Josh, and Elijah said unto her, fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but, that's the breaks, but make me thereof a little the man, this man of God wasn't, he wasn't asking her to give her, her rent. But he said, just, just give me a tiny bit of what you got. Wow. Wow. Elijah knew God was wanting to break this woman open for a miracle. Yeah. He gives seed to the soul. Come on, somebody. Wow. Watch this. Look at, l- l- let me look into that camera. Those who sow in tears. Yeah. That's, that's, that's when it's tough. Jeff, man, you all, is the Holy Ghost talking to you? This boy all up in my business tonight. Jeff said that, that's when it hurts. Oh, it hurts, but all the rewards. Well, this, this is what he said. He said, those who sow in tears, that means it's tight. And God is saying, give anyway, trust me. Those who sow in tears, guess what? Shall reap in joy, rejoicing, bringing their sheaves in. That's the harvest. He wants you to trust him. If you sow in tears, you're going to reap in joy. Glory to God. Put that scripture back up for me. Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but bake me. There have a little cake first and bring it unto me, and after make for you and your son. For thus said the Lord God of Israel. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, someone lift your hands to heaven. I feel a breakthrough anointing here tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost is talking to some of his people. Put that scripture. He said, for thus said the Lord God of Israel, the Holy Ghost talking to some people here tonight who is back or against the wall. You are in a tight place, but your deliverance is in your seed. Your deliverance is in your obedience. He is asking you to give an offering of faith on tonight. This is a faith offering. That's what it is. Put that scripture back for me. For thus said the Lord, God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail. Until the day that the Lord sent rain on the earth, God said, I'm going to sustain you every time my God and Lord help me, Jesus. Watch here. And she went and she went and did. It's the secret right there. She didn't just hear it. She didn't just wave her hands and shout it. She went and did. Did she obey according to the saying of Elijah? And guess what, Edwin? She and he and her house did eat many days. Bow your heads before God right now and close your eyes. The Holy Ghost is talking to some of you. Ask him. God, what do you, what are you asking me to do, Lord? What are you asking me to do? I see some people are missing that moment. You know, the Holy Ghost is the one who put it in my heart to ask for 300 people to step up to the plate, either new people or people who have been partnering with you and ask them to do a little more. 
Would you be one of those 300? The Holy Ghost is talking to his people tonight. Do what you can and trust God to take care of you. It's coming back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Talk to him. Say, God, what is it that you want me to give in this offering? You know, we don't take up every offering like this, but there are times when, when the Holy Ghost stirs his people because he want to give someone a financial breakthrough. He want to deliver someone and bring them out of poverty, yes. bring them out of debt, and bring them out of that tight place. Yes, sir. That's this kind of offering tonight. The Holy Spirit is talking to many of you tonight. Just obey God. Obey him. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for your wonderful children here tonight. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that's stirring their hearts. You know what they're able to do. You are not trying to break them. You're trying to bless them. You're not trying to take from them. You're trying to give something to them that they never dreamed possible. As your children obey you tonight, open the windows of heaven, blow their minds, let them see results, let them see a harvest coming. In the name of Jesus, stay right in that flow. To give in this offering, you just obey what the Holy Ghost put in your heart. What you do tonight is between you and God. To give in this offering right now, just visit us online at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry app that's on thousands of your phones. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Zelle account. That email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the ministry cash app account. That address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888. You can also give through the ministry Venmo account. That email, that address is at Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also mail your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 27. 26 McKinney, Texas 75070. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Split a dawn long song. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Glory to God. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day. He will make a way, He will make a way. Come on, sing it with me. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways. He works in ways we cannot see. i 
And without further delay, we'd like to present to you Jeffrey Zimmerman, a man of God that I have learned to love. Jeffrey is a real disciple, and he serves me and Pastor Amy in the ministry, him and his wife, Melanie, and Jeff is absolutely awesome. He's honorable. He is loyal. He earned his stripes. Take it, Jeff. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Sean, for that wonderful wonderful welcome and uh, I'm always happy to be uh, with all of God's wonderful people uh, on the, the normal sometimes the morning prayer broadcast this time the live broadcast um, we're just always so happy to be here Melanie and I love Pastor Sean and Pastor Amy love to serve alongside them it's great to be a part of what God is doing amen and uh, you know the title of the message tonight is God will grow you as you go and you know what we're saying with that is that you don't have to be perfect for God to use you amen you know sometimes people hear the call of God on their life and you know, I guess you have kind of two ways that people can go with that. Sometimes people think, oh, you know, well, I've got a call of God in my life so I can walk into church and without knowing anything or anybody, just get up on there and, and start preaching to the masses, you know, and, and, and just shoot up to the top right off. You know, of course, we know it don't work like that. Amen. You know, one thing Pastor Sean used to always tell us, preparation is never lost time Jesus spent three years discipling his disciples you know and preparing them for what they were going to do so so there's that group but then there's another group I believe who they say they you know sometimes you look at, at, at ministers and you think oh I, I I could never do that you know and 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 they think well my goodness, you know, uh, you just don't know what I've done. You know, you don't know what my family was like. You know, you don't know where, where I came from. You don't know, you know. Well, uh, I want to say this evening that if you are someone who's got it all together, you always dot every T, you, I mean, dot every I. You always cross every T. See, I can't even dot the I's right. I taught it a T just now. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah. If you're one who does everything perfect and you just got it all together all the time, then this word is not for you. Amen. 
But if you're like me, and you were a nobody once, and God called you into His will, into His work, into His ministry, when you were nobody, amen, then I have good news for you. God will grow you as you go. See, that's what God did with Gideon. And that's who we're talking about tonight. Amen? And before we get started talking about him, let's go ahead and pray over the message this evening. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we are so thankful to be here again today. We are thankful that we are here in front of the wonderful people of God. Lord, as I speak the word of God to your people today, God, I pray that the word would be so simple that even a child would understand what you are saying. God, I pray that many would be encouraged today. Lord, I pray that broken hearts would be revived, Lord. People who feel defeated would be encouraged that their faith would be strengthened, Lord God. And that people would know that you have not given up on us, Jesus. And that you have a call for every single person. You have a plan and a purpose for every person on this broadcast, Lord. Minister to your people, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to go to Judges chapter 6, starting in verse 1. And again, we're talking about Gideon. Now, as I said, the title is, God will grow you as you go. And uh, the subtitle that I had here is, you are a work in progress. (laughs) Amen. Amen. And I am a work in progress. Everybody is a work in progress. You see, Catherine Coleman put it like this. God is not looking for golden vessels. He's not looking for silver vessels. See, if God were looking for gold or silver vessels, that would have disqualified me and you. Amen? (laughs) Yeah, we, we wouldn't have been in that number. Amen? But Catherine Coleman said, God is looking for yielded vessels, for people who just say yes when God calls them. That's what God is after. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to say everything just right. You know, you don't have to do everything just right. Amen? You, you know, God can use you, and we're going to see that in the story of Gideon today. And I like the story of Gideon because I relate to this man. And I'm going to show you why as we go. Judges chapter 6 verse 1. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian for seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. And because of the Midianites... The children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. For the Midianites, that's verse 5, came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude. For both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. Now, you can tell that the devil is behind the Midianites because the devil is the one who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen? Now, what these Midianites were doing, the Bible gives the perfect description. The Holy Ghost gave a perfect description for these guys because it says they were like grasshoppers. See, what grasshoppers do, remember the plague of locusts in Egypt. What grasshoppers, locusts are kind of like big grasshoppers. What the grasshoppers do is they come into a, a, a field where the farmer has planted crops and they eat them. Yeah. They eat them up. And that's what the Midianites were doing with the children of Israel. They were coming in with their vast numbers 
and they were eating up their their crops they were eating their food they were taking all their uh resources that they used to build with that's why the children of israel it says here they had to live in dens in the mountains they had to carve a, a, a hole out in the mountain to go live in they had to go live in caves you see that's why they had to do that because the midianites were going in and just grabbing up everything and hoarding it oh my god now that'll preach to us you don't want to be stingy amen that's what stinginess does it grabs everything uh oh uh oh oh my god Mm -mm. that is what stinginess will do that's what greed will do these people were greedy these people didn't care they wanted what was for them and the children of israel they could die as far as they and that's exactly what they were trying to do they were trying to kill them they were trying to starve them out you see and it says here in verse 6 israel was greatly impoverished because of the midianites the midianites put them into poverty now how many of you know poverty is not from god poverty is of the devil I don't care. I I know there have been men and women of God in times past who took a vow of poverty. Not me. (laughs) No, no. Uh uh. That is not of God. I'm sorry to say. The Bible wouldn't say that God desires above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers, if it was God's will for us to be in poverty. Amen? Okay, I think we, we clarified that. Now, Israel was in this situation by their own fault. You see? Yes. Because it says in verse 1, yes, they did evil in the sight of the Lord. Yes, now, not all the time, because we know the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. We know that sometimes people go through hardships. They go through hard times because they're in the will of god you know there's sometimes people that look at you and say well you're going through hardship you must be out of the will of god no sometimes it's because you're in the will of god that you're going through it but there are times listen the bible says the way of the transgressor is hard amen there are consequences for sin hello somebody come on now so they were in this situation by their own doing you see they had disobeyed god and so this is why god allowed this to happen but look at the end of verse six the children of israel cried unto the lord i believe there's somebody listening to me today that needs to hear this our god is a merciful god Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin. And not only that, he will heal their land in other words not only will god forgive your sin but he's going to get you out of that mess that you got yourself into now look all of us have had situations where we got ourselves into the mess amen i'm guilty you're guilty we're all guilty but we serve a merciful god god loves us and any time we turn from our wickedness, we humble ourselves and we cry out to him. David said, this poor man cried yes, sir. Yes, sir. and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all his trouble. And these were poor people. We just said they were in poverty. Yes, sir. Amen. These were poor people. Just lift your hands to heaven for a moment, folks. I feel like somebody, 
somebody is saying, I thought God forgot about me. Somebody's right on this program saying, I thought God forgot about me. Look, God has not forgotten you. God has heard your cry. Your cry is not falling on deaf ears. I want you to be encouraged tonight as you listen to this message. I believe you're going to get a breakthrough right where you're sitting. In Jesus' name. See, a breakthrough doesn't start with some thing that happens out here somewhere. A breakthrough starts in prayer. Amen? And it starts when you hear a message like this one. Amen? Yes. When you hear it and you receive it, that's the beginning of your breakthrough. Yes. Amen? Amen. Verse 11 of Judges chapter 6. There came an angel of the Lord. This is the pre-incarnate Christ that's coming. And he sat under an oak tree, which was an Ophrah, that pertained unto Joash the Abiezrite, and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. So, so now here's Gideon, and he's in this little uh, pit in the ground next to a wine press, and he's threshing wheat, right? He's processing the wheat. He's separating it from the chaff and all those things. And what he's doing, he's trying to hide it because if the Midianites know he's got wheat, they'll take his wheat too. Amen? Because that's what they're after. They're trying to starve the people out. So he's hiding it. Sometimes God puts us in hiding for a time. Amen? You know, sometimes God gives you a call on your life, but then you, you might be like John the Baptist. You're on the backside of the desert. Yes. And you're wondering, how in the world is it going to happen with me back here? But sometimes, it's like we said before, God is preparing us, you see. There's a time of preparation. But tonight, we're going to find out that God will grow you as you go. Watch this. So he's hiding it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him. And he said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. And I imagine Gideon went like this. You talking to me? Mighty man of valor? See, back when I first met Pastor Sean, he was the youth pastor at the church where I went in Little Rock, Arkansas. He became the youth pastor. And so it was one of the first youth services that I went to where he was, was, uh, was preaching. And he started to pray for the people. And he came to me and he said, God, you see how his humility. And I did the same thing Gideon did. Humility? I'm arrogant. This man doesn't know who I am. He, he doesn't know me. How does he know me? He, 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 this man made a mistake. You know. but, but see, God didn't, he didn't miss God. Pastor Sean didn't miss God. He saw something inside me, you see. And God saw something inside of Gideon. He's calling him a mighty man of valor. Now Gideon's hiding. Gideon is not a brave man. Amen? He's hiding. But he says to him, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. In verse 13, Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where are all his miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Now here, Gideon has some honest questions. God does not get mad at people who have honest questions. God is telling you he's with you. You're like, eh, where? My back's against the wall. I'm not at the bottom of the barrel. I'm looking up at the bottom of the barrel. I, I, I'm, beneath, I, I'm being walked on by everybody. 
Amen? You know, like Gideon was saying, how can you say God is with us? Where is he? Where are all his miracles? You know, he's saying God has abandoned us. God has forsaken us. Anybody feel that way? Do you ever feel like God has abandoned you? Because I know I do sometimes. You know? And, and it's okay to be honest with God. And look at verse 14. The Lord looked upon him. Now remember, I told you this was the pre-incarnate Jesus. Can't you just see Jesus' tender eyes focusing on this man? He looked upon him. He had his attention. Jesus was saying, I hear what you're saying. Somebody needs to hear that. God's listening to you. He hears you. You may have even started to feel guilty because you cried out at night. You can't sleep. You've been tossing and turning. Asking God, where are you? Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You know? And he's looking at you. He hears your cry. And he said, the Lord said to him, he said, Go in this thy might, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent you? Now, when he says, go in this thy might, he's not saying go in your own strength. Amen? Because Proverbs 3, 5, chapter 3, verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. But what he's saying here is, you're going to go just as you are. See, God doesn't wait for you to get it together, look a certain way, have your hair done just so. Boy, look here. When Pastor Sean and Pastor Amy found me, I looked like something from the 1960s, I promise you. The way I dressed, the way I did my hair, the way I, I mean everything. And I, 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 I was something else. But, but, uh, but, get, but the Lord said, Go in this thy might, just go as you are. Because why? Because God will grow you as you go. Amen? And he said, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent you? And Gideon said to him, oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Isn't that what Moses said? When God called him from the burning bush, didn't Moses say, who am I to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt? He said, wherewood shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. G Gideon was the least. So was David. David was out there with the sheep. But God wouldn't let them forget about David. Joseph was down in the prison, but God wouldn't let them forget about Joseph. And here's Gideon, the least of the least, out here threshing wheat, hiding. He doesn't even have the courage to thresh wheat out in the open. And God's saying, you're my man. You're the man. You're the woman. You feel like you don't have anything to offer? You're exactly what God's looking for. It's the people who think they've got it all together, the people who can't be taught nothing, the people who can't sit down and learn at the feet of a man or woman of God. Those are the ones God can't do anything with. But boy, if you sit there and you think, man, I ain't got, I'm the least of the least, I'm the lowest of the low, you know, and you think, I, I ain't got nothing. God said, you're the one I want. I choose you. Follow me. That's what Jesus said. In fact, that's the next scripture, Matthew 4, 19. Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. See, the disciples weren't fishers of men when he found them. They were fishers, but not fishers of men. 
Jesus said, follow me and I will make you. But see, you, he can't make you until you follow him. Yes. See, he's not going to snap his fingers and turn you into something you're not and then tell you to follow him. You got you to gotta take that first step, you see. You got to step out. And that's why it's called faith. Because you're not what God has called you to be yet. Amen? But what do you do? You step out in faith. You take that first step. Um, when Moses was telling God that he was slow of speech, God said, I will give you Aaron your brother, because Aaron can speak well. In Exodus 4, 16, God said, Aaron will be your spokesman unto the people, and he shall be, even he shall be to you instead of a mouth, and you shall be to him instead of God. Now, that just means that God would use Moses to represent him to Aaron. So Moses would tell Aaron what God was saying, and then Aaron would talk to Pharaoh. But how many of you know that by the time the last plague came on Egypt, Moses wasn't talking through Aaron no more? Amen? Moses was talking to Pharaoh on his own at that point, you see? So God grows you as you go. Amen? You may not be, you know, you, you may hear the call of God on your life, and you may just keep thinking, man, I am not. I, I don't, I'm no good at this, I'm no good at this, I'm no good at, you know, you, you might, you might, uh, God may be calling you to be a worship leader, you say, I can't, I can't play a keyboard, you know, God may be calling you to preach, and you may say, I freeze up in front of a crowd, but he's not asking you to be there today, he's just asking you, follow him, see, that's where some people miss it, because a man or woman of God have the ability to look at you and see what you are in the spirit. And they will tell you, you're called for this. You're called for that. But you can't just jump up and do. You've got to follow. Follow me as I follow Christ is what the Apostle Paul said. Amen? Paul said in Romans chapter 9, verse 20, Nay, but, O man, who are you that replies against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why have you made me thus? Has not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel into honor and another to dishonor? In other words, God has made you exactly the way he wants you. You are exactly the way God wants you to be. Amen? He has created you that way for a reason. And if you'll just trust him in faith. And that's what Gideon had to do. So now we come to Judges chapter 7. And verse 1 says, Then Jeroboam, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched beside the, wall of, the well of Herod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Morah in the valley. All right. So uh, Gideon and those are on this kind of a hill. The Midianites are all down in this valley. And the Lord sent unto Gideon. Now, now, <laughs> you know, we skipped a few verses here. Uh, Gideon, as we said, was not a brave man. You know, he put out two fleeces. Asking God to prove that it's actually you that called me. You know, and God did what he asked him, you know. To, to, to help build his confidence, you see. Now, somehow or another, Gideon went out and found himself 32,000 men. Now, I don't know how he did that, but I, I would say that's pretty good. <laughs> now, granted, when you've got an enemy that's numbered the sands of the sea, 32,000 men is a handful, amen? You know, that's not that many men. But but Gideon thought he was doing pretty good. He got him 32,000 guys, you know, to, together. Let's, 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 go, let's go do this. Let's go take care of business, you see. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people that are with you are too many for me. What? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. We just said the people of Midian, the, the Bible says their camels were without number said they were as numerous as the sands of the sea. Yeah, that means you probably couldn't even see the horizon for all the people. 
in this valley. 32,000 men. And you saying I got too many? He said, the people that are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, my own hand has saved me. See, God was looking at their hearts. Yeah, he was having mercy on Israel by saving them through Gideon, but God understood. He said, uh-uh, I'm not giving these people any opportunity to say that they did this. Have you ever been doing something in your life and maybe you, uh, you're an employee, at, at, you know, wherever you work, and you've been asking God, you say, God, I'm working a lot of overtime. I, I, uh, you know, uh, we need more people to come in here and start working and give me a break. And before you know it, the boss uh, uh, doesn't actually bring more people on. He has to let some people go. And you're there like, wait, God, no, that, that ain't what I said. And you're rebuking the devil. Amen? Or you've got, you're, you're trying to do something and you've got so much money in your bank account, you know you don't have enough. But before you know it, something happens and you've got to spend some of that. You're like, wait, God, I was asking for more, not less. Now, we know that the devil can attack your finances and he can attack your job too. But how many of you know that sometimes it ain't the devil? Sometimes God is saying, uh-uh, you got too much. Because God's not going to allow anyone to get the glory. The Bible says, I will share my glory with no man. The words of God, he won't share his glory with anybody. So God's not going to take a chance on people being able to take credit for something that he does. Amen? So, in verse 3, the Lord said to Gideon, Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid... Let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. Whoever is fearful and afraid. Hmm. People that got a spirit of fear. When you answer the call of God on your life, everybody can't go with you. Amen. Man, I had family members that I was sure They'd go with me anywhere. When the call of God, when I felt the call of God to go with Pastor Sean and Pastor Amy, because I was going to go to medical school. I had my bachelor's already. Amen? And I heard God talk to me, and I told Pastor Sean, I said, Pastor Sean, I said, uh uh, I'm not supposed to go to medical school. I said, I'm supposed to help you in the ministry. And I felt sure my family would be right behind me. They're behind me, all right. Way behind me. Yeah, they, so, you know, and, and I mean, they, they, they called up, they called us everything but children of God, amen? I mean, they, they gossip, they, you know, tried to cut me off. No, not, didn't want to give me, you know, help, help support me or nothing. Uh-uh. I was on my own. Amen. With a faith healer is what they called him. That's what they called Pastor Sean. My family called him a faith healer. <laughs> eh? I mean, they, look, I stayed up with, my, with one, of my, one of my relatives till early, early in the morning. I, I didn't know no better. Because she was going, this person was going to Pastor Sean's church. She wasn't listening to him. Well, she ain't going to listen to the Holy Ghost. She ain't going to listen to the preacher. What am I? Who am I? Amen? I didn't have that much sense back then, but thank God for the blood. Thank God that he grows me as I go. Amen? Amen. So now Gilead, uh, Gilead, Gideon had his crew cut down from 
32,000 people, they returned of the people after he said, let the people who are fearful depart. 22,000 people left, and he was left with 10,000. And I'm sure Gideon thought, now wait a minute, God, now look. You, you, some, some, something's wrong in here somewhere. Because I barely had enough people to do the job before. Now, like almost two, over two-thirds of people have left. I got 10,000 people here. And, and, and then, you know, he, he, maybe he started to, to, to calm himself down and say, okay, okay, all right, well, this is God, I understand. And uh, I, I, I guess I can make this work, you know, 10,000 people. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people are still too many. God, oh, come on. Huh? You're waiting for God to increase you, and instead he's taken away. Didn't Job say the Lord gives and the Lord takes away? Amen? I mean, think about Job for a second. The Bible said he was a perfect and an upright man, a man who feared God and avoided evil. And yet he lost his family. He lost his property, everything he owned, he lost his cattle. Yes. Every single thing he owned on the planet Earth, he lost. And guess what? He lost his health also. And as he's talking to God and asking him what's going on, then the Lord sends his three friends to give him even more trouble. So Joseph, Job probably felt like he couldn't win for losing. Amen? He went from bad to worse. Now, of course, we know that that was the devil doing it, but it was God who brought Job up in the first place. Amen? So sometimes when we start losing, it ain't the devil. God said, you still got too many. Bring them down to the water. I'm going to try them for you there. It shall be that of whom I say to you, this shall go with you, the same will go with you. And of whom I say unto you, this shall not go with you, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people to the water. And the Lord said to Gideon, everyone that laps of the water with his tongue, as a dog laps, him shall you set by himself. Likewise, Everyone, excuse me, that boweth down upon his knees to drink. So, so this is what's happening. He takes them all down to the water. The Lord says to Gideon, I wanted you to watch how these guys drink water. He says, the people that put their hands in and lap it up like a dog like this, them you keep. The ones who get on their knees, Go to lap it up like that, drink it like that, get rid of them. See, because the people that put their hand in, they may be lapping like a dog, but guess what? They're looking. They're checking it out. They're, they're seeing where the enemy's at. They're looking to Gideon saying, make sure he's all right. You know, checking the land, seeing, okay, what, what are good, what's a good strategic place for me to, to you know, they're, they're, they're thinking, you see. They're keeping their eyes open. They're watching for ambushes. Amen? They're, they're not so focused on getting that drink of water that they can't keep their eyes open and see what's going on around them. Now, these guys that get on their knees, oh, they don't care about nothing except getting that water. Nom, 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 nom. They're just, they're just drinking, drinking, drinking. All they care about is quenching their thirst to get their bellies full. And they're probably bumping each other out of the way because they can't see nothing because they got their heads down like this because they're drinking the water, you know, like this out the, you know. <laughs> and so they're, they're getting in each other's way. Amen? And so the Lord said to Gideon, well, I, I'm, I'm getting a little bit ahead. The number of them, this verse 6, that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were 300 men. 300 men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. God said, you don't need them. They won't help you. They'll be looking out for them. 
How many of you know that sometimes you get people around you to try to help you, but they're looking now for number one? Yes, sir. They don't have your best interest in mind. Yes, Boy, we've seen it over and over and over. I don't care how loud they shout. <laughs> I don't care how high they jump. How much they fall out. I, how much they fall out. I, we had a guy that would get on the keyboard and play anointed music. But guess what? He was out for number one. And when the heat got turned on and things got tough, <laughs> he was nowhere to be found. <laughs> he vanished in the wind. <laughs> Amen. That's what happens. You got to make sure you've got people around you that are looking out for you and they've got the 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 kingdom of God on their minds. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then these things will be added to you. But Judas didn't want to hear that. Judas wanted the things. He didn't want to seek the kingdom of God. And he got took out. And we've seen it over and over and over again. Person after person who had something in mind other than the call of God, the will of God. He's, see, see, now here's the thing. If you are dedicated to something, you will do whatever you have to do. If there have been people in the world even, actors, business people, people of different um, businesses and stuff that came up on hard times and they did not quit. Some of these guys would sleep out of their cars yes, to, make to make it happen. Now, we're not talking about people of God. We're talking about people of the world, secular people who go through and do whatever they got to do to get to where they're trying to get to. They got a goal in mind. Now, my God, if a person in the world can do that, how much more should you and I be able to do it with God on our side? Amen? Because let me tell you something. People who accomplish their goals in this world, they may accomplish them, but they ain't going nowhere when they die except to hell. Amen? So, God is the one who said, I will prosper you. God said, I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to hurt you, to give you an expected end, to get you to where you're going, to get you to where I've called you. Amen? So the Lord said to Gideon, by the 300 men that lapped will I save you. That's it. it only takes God, it only took him 300 men. That's all he needed. God could do it with one man, you know. But, you know, like Pastor was saying earlier, we do need help. Amen. No one man could do it by themselves. But God, all he needed was 300 men. And I will... Deliver the Midianites into your hand and let all the people go, every man to his place. They went home. The rest of them guys went home. So in verse 8, the Bible says, So the people took victuals in their hand. They took food and their trumpets. And Gideon sent all the rest of Israel, every man to his tent. They went home. And he retained those 300 men. And the host of Midian was beneath him in the valley. So here they are. He's got his 300 guys, and here's the whole host of Midian. Now, check this out. Nothing changed with Midian. Same number of people are still down there. They haven't left. They haven't given up. They're still there, chowing down on Israel's stuff. You know, living in their tents. And so forth. 
driving their cars. Bring it up to the 21st century. Amen? Hmm. The Bible says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Amen? So, it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto Gideon, Arise, get you down unto the host, for I have delivered them into your hand. Now, I can kind of see old Gideon here. The Lord just told him, it's time. The time has come. Gideon's looking. I got, I got 300 guys. I, I, I don't see nothing happening with those Midianites down there. They look like they're sleeping pretty sound to me. They still got their armor. They still got their numbers. Gideon's a little nervous here. It's like, and God said, but if you fear to go down, because God could tell, Gideon was still nervous. Still wasn't, he, was, he needed a boost in his confidence. He needed a boost in his faith, you see. Because sometimes, look, I don't care who you are. Certain situations you get in, you get scared. Jeho the Bible said Jehoshaphat feared. Yes, he, he was a man of war. He went, he, he'd get in his chariot and go out to battle with the rest of his people. But when he heard three different nations were coming against him to take him out, he got nervous. Amen? Reason started to try to kick in, you see. Well, my dad used to say, reason is the enemy of faith. But how many of you know, it gets scary sometimes, amen? Come on, I don't care who you are, how long you've been with God, if you're a great man, a woman of God, all those kinds of things, you still get scared sometimes, amen? And so he was a little nervous. God said, if you fear to go down, go with Fura thy servant down to the host, and you shall hear what they say. And afterward shall your hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. So the Bible says, Gideon went down with Fur his servant unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host. Now, I want you to pay attention to something here. Every time God told Gideon to do something, he did it. That's a serious key. Gideon didn't understand how come God was taking him from 32,000 men to 10,000. He couldn't comprehend how come God was taking him down from 10,000 to 300. But every time God told him what to do and what, when to do it, Gideon did it just exactly like God said. You got to be able to follow instructions, folks. Whether you're in a church, whether you're in your job. You know, if you can't follow the boss's instructions at work, guess what happens to you? You get fired, right? And why do we think we can go into the house of God and do what we want to do? Amen? God has put the ministers, the pastors in the house of God there for a reason. And when they tell us what to do, we just do exactly what they say. And we'll be all right. Amen? The Bible says, The Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude, and their camels were without number as the sand by the seaside for multitude. So the Holy Ghost is driving this point home. Nothing's changed with these guys. Same numbers, same Midianites, same enemy. Nothing's changed. But when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow. So now two Midianites are down here talking. And he said, Behold, I dreamed a dream. And lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian 
and came unto a tent and smote it, that it fell and overturned it, that the tent lay along. In other words, he's saying this, this, this cake of barley bread came rolling into the camp and flattened this dude's tent, ran right over it. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel, for into his hand has God delivered Midian and all the host. Is God telling you to do something? God may want you to be the person that delivers a whole nation. Amen? Or a whole group of people. You may be the, the, per, the, the, the break, breakthrough person in your family. Amen? He was calling on Gideon. The enemy was admitting that Gideon is going to kick our tails. Doesn't the psalmist said, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies? His enemy is admitting. Remember Rahab when she hid the spies? The, is, the Israelite spies? Joshua chapter 2, verse 10. Rahab told the spies, she said, We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt. And what, he, what, he, what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we, now this is Rahab talk about the people of Jericho, as we heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of who? Because of you. The enemy doesn't know everything. But guess what? God will tell the enemy, will make sure the enemy finds out about your past victories and it strikes fear into his heart. The enemy's shaking in his boots when you come around. Now, he may try to act real big and try to make it loud and, 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 and holler and scream and make it sound like he's all big and bad, you know, just like a cat. When you, when you corner a cat in an alley, he's going to get all big like this. He's going to bristle his hair all up. He's going to start growling, you know. He, he makes all kinds of noise because he's trying to look real big and tough. But as a matter of fact, all you got to do is take a step towards him and he'll take off. The devil ain't got nothing on the child of God. The Bible says, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. How many of you know that when you are with God, one will chase a thousand, two will put 10,000 to flight. If God is for us, who, who, who can be against us? Nobody can be against you if God is the one behind you. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Hallelujah. You think you're there by yourself. You're not by yourself because anytime you tell the devil what to do and you rebuke him in the name of Jesus, you're Jesus is standing right behind you. He's saying, you hear what he's saying. You got to do what he says. Because this ain't him talking. This me talking. You got to go. Come on, Amen. Submit yourselves, therefore, unto God. Resist the devil. And he has to flee. Oh, he may, he may fight for a little bit. He may kick for a little bit because he's persistent. But you keep after him and you don't let up. He has to go. The enemy is scared of you. I'm talking about people 
who are in the will of God, doing what they're supposed to do, doing things the way God tells them to do it. The enemy may look like they've got more numbers than you, but remember, Elisha's servant said, Oh, Master, what are we going to do? We got all these people. And Elisha said, Lord, please open his eyes. And the, the Lord did open his eyes, and he saw that there was more that were with them than were with the enemies. There was a whole host of heavenly hosts on horseback with fire ready to take that enemy down. Elijah had a whole troop come against him from the king. Said, the king demands that you come right now. Elijah said, yeah, burn him up. If I be a man of God, let fire come down. And fire came down not once, twice. An army, one man of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So once Gideon heard that, now something happened on the inside of him. See, God will grow you as you go. Gideon would have obeyed God when God said, Arise, go. But God could tell that Gideon had just a little bit of nervousness, just a little bit of hesitation. He just needed a little confirmation. How many of you just need a little confirmation? Just need, may, may, you're getting your confirmation tonight. Many of you are getting the confirmation you need. All you need is a little push in the right direction. All you need is a little encouragement. All you need is to know that the enemy is shaking in their boots because of you. That's all Gideon needed. And the Bible says, in verse 15, it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof, first thing he did, he worshiped. He said, thank you, God. He remembered to thank God. Very important. And he returned to the host of Israel. And now Gideon said, arise, for the Lord has delivered into your hand the host of Midian. Now Gideon had confidence. Now he had faith because he did the thing that God told him to do. God knew what he needed. See, God knows what you need. That's why he tells you to do certain things. And if you just do what he tells you to do, you'll get the encouragement you need. And a lot of you are doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing tonight because you're watching this broadcast. It's no accident that you're here today. And he divided the 300 men he had into three companies. And he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. And he said unto them, Look at me. Very important. You got to keep your eye on the leader. You got to keep your eye on them. You go where they go. You do what they do. You got to follow their lead. He said, look on me and do like I do. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall you do. When I blow with a trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow you the trumpets also on every side of all the camp and say the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Now, it's obvious the Holy Ghost must have given Gideon this strategy. You know, just like with Jehoshaphat, once Jehoshaphat got the word that God said, you won't even need to fight in this battle. Go forth. In the morning, Jehoshaphat got his army together and he put the praise team out in front. Remember? To praise God ahead of the army. See, Jehoshaphat had to have gotten that from the Holy Ghost. He had to have gotten that in prayer. 
And Gideon, it's the same thing. He got this strategy from God. So they got these torches, but the torches are covered. Now, remember earlier we said sometimes you've got to stay covered for a while. Jesus spent uh, 30 years out of view before he came forth in his ministry, you see. So Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch, and they had but newly set the watch, so they just changed the guard. And they blew the trumpets and broke the pitchers that were in their hands. And the three companies blew the trumpets and broke the pitchers and held the torches in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow with all. And they cried, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So now the torches that were covered, they broke the covers, they broke the pitchers, and now the light could be seen. Amen? When God gets ready to put his glory on a situation, things got to change. When the light of God comes into the situation, the enemy can't, can't do nothing with that. They stood every man in his place round about the camp, and all the host ran and cried and fled. Wait a minute. A million people? Number the sands of the sea? 300 guys shouting and they all take off. The Bible says they will come at you one way and shall flee from you seven different ways. The enemy has no defense against Jesus. He has no defense against the might of the Lord. He has no defense against against the anointing the bible says in james chapter 4 verse 7 submit yourselves therefore to god when you submit yourself when you are obedient when you're doing what god told you to do when you're living right before god then when you resist the devil he doesn't have a choice The Bible says he will flee from you. He ain't got a choice. He has to go. He has to go. God will grow you as you go. Now, we just watched Gideon change from a man who was hiding. A man who was scared a man who was lacked confidence to becoming a general we watched him progress didn't we but it didn't start happening until he stepped out he had to step out on what God told him to do first. I think it was Oral Roberts that said, God can't steer a parked car. If God has, now it's different if God hasn't told you to do something. But if you know God has told you to do something, God's waiting for you to obey him. Everything else will work out once you take that step. Amen? Amen? Father God, I lift up the people of God tonight. I thank you for every person that is here tonight, Lord. Lord, you have great and mighty callings on on each person that's under the sound of my voice tonight. Lord, you have great plans, great things in store for them. You said in your word that you would show us great and mighty things that we don't even know that you can do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us God 
I pray that as each person hears your word this evening and steps out in faith, God, that you would grow them as they go, that you would make them as the master potter into the vessel that they need to be. Do for them a mighty work tonight. In the name of Jesus, let every enemy, every demon in hell flee from before them as they hear the word of God and do it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And if you don't know Jesus this evening, then this is the time for you to accept Jesus as your Savior. And so you can, because, because even though you may have done some horrible things, and you may say, oh, Brother Jeff, you just don't know what I've done. You don't know what kinds of things I've look. The Bible says if we confess our sins, He, God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave, <clears throat> excuse me, His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So without further delay, if you want to receive Jesus tonight as your Savior, bow your head with me and say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you came to this earth that they put you on a cross and that you died for my sins to save me from sin. They put you in a borrowed tomb and after three days you rose from the dead. And you are coming again. Lord Jesus, I've done a lot of bad things. But as Brother Jeff said tonight, you came to save me. You so loved the world, you gave yourself. And I ask you to come in right now and save me. I turn my back on the world, the flesh, and the devil. And I will follow you from now until I breathe my last. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. And if you said that prayer tonight and you meant it with all your heart, we want to welcome you into the family of God. Hallelujah. Give God a hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you just accept, if you just surrendered, your heart to Jesus, type it in the live chat, please. Type it in the live chat. Say, I just surrendered my heart to Jesus. Go ahead and type it in because it's important to, to testify because Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me here on earth, then I will shame be, be ashamed of you before my Father and the holy angels in heaven. So, so type it in the live chat right now if you have just surrendered your life to Jesus. Pastor Sean. Amen. Amen. 
Ladies and gentlemen, if you have just given your life to Jesus, we, we, we have uh, created a booklet for you. It's called First Steps in a New Direction. And now that you are saved, we want you to do three things. Number one, we want you to pray. And prayer is simply talking to God. You got to talk to God every day. And every time you pray, you end that prayer by saying, in Jesus' name. The second thing we want you to do is read the Word of God on a daily basis. Uh, We have an app at Sean Pinder Ministries, and uh, there's a lot of things on that app. One of the things it has is a translation, several translations of the Bible are on that app. So, Uh, find a translation that's easy for you to understand and read and start by reading the book of John the book of John is a very simple book to read and uh, and that's a good place an excellent place to start and uh, because just like a newborn baby needs food in order to to grow and develop you as a newborn Christian need food uh, and, and, and reading the Bible is your spiritual food. Amen. We see a, a Cynthia Bergman just surrendered her life to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, Cynthia. Praise God. Amen. Let's all, let's all praise God. Hallelujah. Anyone else has given your heart to Jesus tonight? Just type on there, I surrendered my heart, my life to Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, yeah. Reading the Word of God is our spiritual food and nourishment. Uh, we need it to stay, to stay alive and stay healthy. And then, uh, the third thing, if you live in the DFW area, uh, well, first of all, if you don't live in the DFW area, uh, you'll want to go find a, a church that believes the Bible and, and has the anointing and the power of God uh, present. But if you do live in the DFW area, come on over and see us at Miracle Healing Center Church. We're right there on Cockrell Middle School at 1351 South Hardin Boulevard in McKinney, Texas. Zip code is 75071. We would love to see you out there. And uh, we we, we just just love to to be able to, to minister to you. And we know that you'll be blessed. If you cannot join us in person, then uh, just join us on our e-church. You know, and uh, we go live through Facebook, you, uh, YouTube, and uh, so forth. Amen. Come on, saints, put your hands together and give our God praise for Brother Jeff. You will grow as you go. <laughs> Glory to God. Come on, put your hands together and give him praise. This is how I fight my battle scale. Pull me out of there. Glory to God. Isn't our God absolutely good? Glory to God. Someone lift your hands to heaven and say, this is how I fight my battles. Come on, somebody. This is how I fight my battles. Glory to God. This is how I fight my battles. Come on, someone lift your hands to heaven. This is how I fight my battles. Oh, come on and worship him on tonight. It may look like I'm surrounded. Sing it. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Come on, sing it, church. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how, come on. This is how I fight my battles. And this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Tell them it may look like I'm surrounded. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Tell them this is how I fight my battle. Come on, church. Like I'm surrounded, come on. You may look, look like, like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by, by you. You may look like I'm surrounded, Thank you, Jesus. Listen, 
did you enjoy listening to Minister Jeff on tonight? Gideon started out with 32,000. Lord have mercy. And ended up with 300. I believe, I believe someone on this broadcast tonight, you need to know that sometimes before God increase you, he have to decrease you. And it's in that decreasing stage that you learn it's not by power, it's not by might, but it is by my spirit, says the Lord. Who is the Holy Ghost talking to on tonight? Someone lift your hands to heaven. Say it's by the Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You will grow as you go. Go in the strength that you have. God want to use so many of us. And just like Gideon, we come up with all kinds of excuses. But God's hands is on your life. I enjoy listening to you, Jeff. Thank you for stepping up to the plate and giving Pastor Sean a breather. <laughs> Thank you. Our God is so awesome. Have you enjoyed yourself on tonight? Come on, let's put our hands together and give God praise for Minister Jeff preaching the Word of God to us. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for being a team player, Jeff. Thank you for always being ready. He's, he's ready in season and out of season. Pastor Steve, you want to greet God's people on tonight? Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So we appreciate God for that message and for Jeffrey to pour out his heart like that. Gideon is an awesome story, lots of lessons that we can learn. But one of the greatest things is God just uses ordinary, everyday people. You don't have to be super talented. You don't have to compare yourself to other people. All God wants is your simple yes. That's all he's looking for is just that yes. And when you tell God yes, it's his job to mold you and to make you into everything he wants you to be. And when he does it, he does it perfectly. So put your hands, put your life in his hands and your future is secure. God bless y'all. Y'all have a wonderful week. Amen. Thank you, Mrs. Beautiful Woman. <laughs> Come on, let's give God praise. We love all of you. We appreciate all of you so much. We will see you on Sunday. We'll see you on Sunday, uh, 10 a.m. <laughs> I meant to say 7 p.m. No, we'll see you Sunday, 10 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time right here in the city of McKinney, Texas at Cockrell Middle School, 1351 South Harden Boulevard. And I'm excited also about... We are changing the way we do our broadcast. We're not getting rid of the morning prayer broadcast all the way, but what we're, going, we're going to mix it up. You know, Jesus teach, he preach, and then he heal. So we're going to start showing some uh, healing testimonies in there and mixing it up a bit. And I believe, this, I believe we're in the perfect will of God. When I was recording the intros and the outros for what we're about to do, I just felt a fresh wind from the Holy Ghost. Amen. And we're going to have the ladies back on here as well as our kids, Minister Jeff, and other people. We love all of you so much. Thanks. Thanks. A huge thanks from me and Pastor Amy to all of you for standing with us, supporting the work of God. God bless you. We love you. We appreciate you. We'll see you Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. God bless. Take care. Bye-bye. We invite you to join our new church, Miracle Healing Center, on Sundays at 10 a.m. at the Cockrell Middle School in McKinney, Texas, with Pastor Sean and Amy Pinder. We welcome people of all ages and backgrounds to come and experience God's love and power, as well as join us as we fulfill the Great Commission preaching the gospel to the lost, and demonstrating God's power. Plan your visit today. Visit MiracleHealingCenter.net. We can't wait to meet you. Never forget, we love you. Take advantage of these other videos here. They will be a blessing to you, a strength. My God, they will be.